Hi class, we are going to work some lease accounting problems and uh, we'll get started here. Let me just uh, briefly as a reminder, uh, with leases, uh, all leases for the lessee end up on a balance sheet. That wasn't true uh, until just a couple of years ago. Uh, we had uh, a lot of companies, it was difficult to compare companies. One airline company may have owned all their planes and had to incur debt to buy those planes. Another airline company leased those airplanes and tried to get into the operating lease rules. And so they had no airplanes on their books and they had no debt on their books, even though they had a, you know, unbelievable amount of dollars tied up in airplanes and with the lease obligations that were just not recorded on the books. So the FASB had to work through that and they came up with the rules that, that you're now studying. And so, uh, what the, the challenge again for this chapter is uh, designating whether this is going to be an operating lease or a finance lease for the uh, lessee or an operating lease or a sales type lease for uh, the lessor. And so when we are in a finance lease for the lessee or a sales type lease for the lessor, uh, then the economic substance of that transaction is that the company the lessee owns the asset substantially and they have debt. And so we will see that. And for, in that example, the, uh, the lease property comes off the books for the lessor. In an operating lease scenario, the uh, equipment stays on the books for uh, the lessor because substantially they still own it. Um, however, in that case, the lessee still uh, records a right of use asset and a lease obligation. So all leases operating or finance leases are on the balance sheet for the lessee. However, the accounting is, is far different uh, for a, a finance lease and uh, we're gonna work quite a few problems on that here. So with that I'm gonna share my screen. No, you don't need to see that. And here you go. Here's uh, my one page summary that uh, if you are in my class, you will receive this. I usually uh, hand this out. Uh, it's kind of a little bit of everything you know, need to know uh, about lease accounting. And so uh, we start off here with the lease accounting term. So the lessor, the company that owns the asset uh, that is being leased to the lessee. Lessee is the company that's uh, using the leased asset. So, uh, and there's a contract between the two that's going to designate the number of years uh, the asset will be leased. And then we're gonna to need to know a uh, number of payments per year and the discount rate. Why? Because we have to calculate the present value of those lease payments uh, for, um, for the lessor and the lessee. So let's look at the journal entries. Again, we're gonna be doing these here in a minute. Uh, the lessor in a finance lease, an operating lease, the lessor does nothing. They just continue to depreciate the asset on the asset. They don't set up a lease, a lease receipt or anything like that. Uh, so we're looking at a finance lease here, the um, lessor, a sales type lease for the lessor. They will debit the lease re uh, receivable. And that's just the present value of all the lease payments. And you could think they're always going to be at the present value of an ordinary uh, annuity due, not an ordinary present value of annuity due because the payments are going to be paid at the beginning of each month and uh, they credit the asset and then take it off their books uh, because substantially they have sold that asset. Now, if it was sold at a profit, then we're gonna credit revenues and um, uh, for the amount of the lease receivable, then we're going to credit the equipment which is lower uh, value than the revenue and uh, debit cost of goods sold like a normal uh, transaction. But that's only if there's a profit. And so um, I, we'll see that here in a minute. The lessee, they're going to debit their asset, right of use asset, and credit the lease payable. And it's also present value of an annuity due uh, for uh, all of the future uh, lease payments under uh, the term. The first entry, kind of interesting because the first entry uh, is day one. No time has passed by, so there's no interest. Interest is based on the time period which you're using someone else's money or someone else is using your money. Uh, uh, day one, we make the first uh, lease payment, day one of the lease term. And so there's no interest. And so for the lessor, 
debit cash and then credit the lease receivable. So on day one, we set up the lease receivable for the present value of this future uh, uh, lease payments. And then we take the first payment and we reduce that lease receivable for that first payment. Uh, on the opposite side, the lessee, they're going to reduce the lease payable and credit cash. So you'll see here, mostly the lessor and lessee are mirror images of each other, although one is recording expense and the other is recording revenue. Now, when we get to the second lease payment, now time has passed. So the lessor is gonna debit cash for the exactly the amount of the lease payment. They're going to credit uh, interest revenue uh, for the discount rate, uh, uh, you know, divided by the payments per year. So if the, you know, we got a, you know, the discount rate is always an annual rate. So we divide by that payments rate times the, you know, it's almost like the back to bonds payable, like the carrying value, except it's the least receivable balance. And then uh, item three, we reduce least receivable. It's a, a, a plug number. And then uh, opposite side here, the lessee debits interest expense. Uh, times the discount rate times the lease receivable balance uh, and debits uh, the lease payable for the difference from the credit to cash. One thing uh, just to warn you about, uh, this is an entry easy to miss on an exam for sure. A lot of students just miss it because they spend so much time and they're so confident, so excited that they got all of this right. They forget we've got this right of use asset out there on the lessee side. And we've got to we've got to amortize it. It's just like depreciation expense. So that's going to come off the books. Well, uh, on on my exam for my classes, we only use straight line depreciation for these. So uh, don't worry about having to go back and uh, relearn uh, double declining balances or other accelerated methods. We'll use a, a straight line. All right. With that, let's look at uh, what I'm here to do uh, in this video is is work some problems. So let's start out with this one here. And what I'm gonna ask you to do, uh, pause the video, uh, look at this, and um, see if, if, uh, for each one of these four scenarios, uh, let's see if it's a, um, uh, and this is for the lessee, is this an operating lease or is this a finance lease? All right, remember, you only have to meet one of the uh, particular criteria. So uh, let's get into the first one, which is lease term, which we have right here. And that is, you gotta memorize these words. You know, you, it's the major part of the useful life. Major part. Uh, the, uh, we'll get into the next one, which is the present value versus the fair value, that's the substantially all of the fair value. So memorize those words. So major part uh, is not defined uh, in percentage terms by the FASB, but a lot of the big four accounting firms that people use in practice, 75%, because that's how uh, the old, old rules worked. Let's see what I'll do is it's, uh, put this up a little bigger here. So you can see me talk here too. Okay, so this lease term is four years. The useful life is six years. So that's about 66% and that's less than 75%. So we're okay there. Asset value is 44,000. Um, so and the annual lease payments are 10,000. And uh, the uh, we know the, uh, less or implicit borrowing rate, so that's going to be 5%. And I've already done these calculations. Um, present value of annuity due, I'm just going to write these down. 37, uh, 232, uh, 34, 651, 651. Now, why are these two different? It's because we know the less, uh, less or implicit rates. So we have to discount it at the 6%, not the 5%. So it becomes a higher number, a lower number. I mean, okay. All right. So here we go. 
is this going to represent substantially all? This is the present value of those lease payments. Does that represent substantially all of the fair market value? Well, the number is 85% and substantially all is uh, in practice 90%. So answer is, uh, is no. And so is a purchase option? Uh, no. Uh, so uh, here we go. This one is going to be an operating lease. Let's go to example two. By the way, I already start. A, there's a purchase option uh, uh, reasonably estimated to be exercised, uh, bargain purchase option. Uh, therefore, yes, so I know that this one's going to meet. But by the way, here's you only have to meet one of the criteria, so 80% there. Uh, this happens to be uh, 81%, but who cares? We only need to pass one, so yes, finance lease. All right, let's go to number three. 66%, four divided by six, less than 75. Uh, now, the asset fair value in this one's 41,000. Uh, and so the present value, 37,232 divided by 41,000 is 91%. Therefore, yes. Finance lease. All right, last one, 66%. Uh, so that's a no, that's a no. And then, um, well, the timing of the payments was at the end of the year. That's another reason why this was a different value, 34. So this was not a present value of annuity due, but this represents 89%. So substantially all. Now this is interesting to me because uh, well, it's less than 90%. And 90% uh, came out, the old rules used to say 90% for finance lease. And you could not imagine in all the businesses I worked in over my career, how many leases came in at 89.999% because the companies leasing stuff to us, they knew the rules. And so they would set it up to be just a, a hair under uh, 90%. So that's why the FASB this time came back and said, we're not giving you percentage at substantially all. So guess what? Because this is a textbook problem. They say, yes, finance lease, because it's close enough at 89%. Now, I wouldn't do that uh, to you on an exam, but I think this is an interesting problem to say, yes, that's going to be a, a, a finance lease. All right. Here we go. Here's a problem. Um, yeah, let's see what I want you to do here. I have the problems here. Oh, I just picked it up. Here, I want you to uh, work this one, but I, I want you to try to do both the uh, lessor and the lessee journal entries. Thank you. Do the lessor and lessee journal entries uh, both for the um, um, day one and um, and then twelve thirty one. All right. Let me see how I'm going to try to work this so you can see. You probably may not be able to see uh, the problem here. Prepared for this. Let's see if I can make this work so you can see both. Might be difficult here. Um, all right. And so one of the um, one of the uh, issues here is just making sure you identify the right company. So so Georgia Atlantic leased 
warehouse equipment from. So here, Georgia Atlantic is the less E. And the lessor is uh, this IC leasing company. And so um, maybe it will help here if I'll just write these problems out. So we have semi-annual lease payments equals 562.907. And they're paid, uh, paid up front day one on June 30th is the first payment. They tell you that there. Uh, the incremental borrowing rate equals 10%, and they say that's the same as the um, implicit rate. So both uh, the lessor and lessee will use the 10% uh, the, uh, rate, and it's a term equal three years and semi-annual, uh, two payments per year. So. Step one, so that's the problem here. Let's go do, um, let's, first thing, for both the lessor and the lessee, we're gonna need to know the present value of the annuity due, because it's gonna be the same for both, because they're both using the 10% rate, they have the same uh, lease payments, obviously, same payments per year, one's receiving, one's paying, uh, same term. So let's go calculate present value of an annuity due, again, annuity due, meaning that the uh, uh, payment is made up front. And this is for uh, 562,907 payment. I is equal to 10% uh, per year, but there's two payments per year, 5%. And uh, N equals three years times two payments per year equal six. So pretty easy to do that. Now, I'm gonna make sure you can see, hopefully you can see my calculator here. And yours may work differently, but this is a present value of annuity due, meaning we've got to put this in the begin mode. In my begin mode, I had this little green color button, if you can see that, and I put it in the begin. And so you can see this is in the begin mode. Now, if you're in an exam and you're working a lease payment problem and you're sitting here, you put your calculator in the begin mode, and then you go to the next problem, which is a, which is a bonds payable problem, which is in the end mode, you gotta make sure you get that calculator off the begin mode because you'll get the wrong answer. So let me clear everything out. Still in the begin mode. I've got 562,907, and that's my payment amount. My interest is five, which is a 10% divided by two, n equals six, and my present value, 2,999,999.72. Guess what? I'm rounding that up. Three million. So right off the bat, I can tell you that the, the less lessor is going to be putting a $3 million receivable on their books, and the lessee is going to be putting a $3 million um, lease payable, lease obligation on the book. So let's go do lessor first. Debit, lease, Receivable for three million. Now let's go back and look at this. Was this sold? Did they sell this at a profit? I see the lessor purchased the warehouse from builders at a cost of three million. So they did not sell at a profit. There's a lot of companies. All they do is they're in the business to lease stuff and to earn interest revenue. They're not in the business of making a profit on buying equipment or buildings at a low price and selling it at a higher price. So this must be more of a financing company. They're just trying to make money on the interest. And so here we just take the, um, and this is a warehouse credit, um, 
warehouse off their books. Now, if this was an operating lease, uh, the lessor would not do this entry at all. They would say, hey, it would, substantially, economically, we have all the substance of really owning this building still, so therefore we keep it on the books and we just get rent uh, income. However, because they've crossed over one of the criteria, you know, that first of all, you can look at the, uh, the present value of the future lease payments, three million is 100% of the value of the warehouse, three million. So uh, definitely this would be uh, a, um, a, buy, a sales type lease for the lessor and a finance lease for the lessee. And so this is the first entry on June 30th. Um, however, guess what also happens on June 30th? They receive cash, debit cash. They get their first payment. How much was that first payment? All the payments are five, 62907. And what do they credit? Lease receivable because now they owe less. So if we look at that lease receivable account, uh, we debit it for 3 million day one, and then we credit it, and it comes right down because no time has passed, there's no interest that's been earned. Uh, that uh, this comes straight off the lease receivable, that first payment. And we roll forward to the um, next payment, 1231. Again, the lessor is going to receive cash, 562907. Uh, but in this case, this lease receivable has been outstanding for six months. What was the value of that lease receivable? Lease receivable ba balance was lease receivable. Started at 3 million. And then we made one payment minus 562,907 back on June 30th. And so the, um, the balance sitting in that account would have been 2 million, 437,000. 93. And so after these two entries on June 30th, debit for 3 million credit, this is the least receivable uh, that's been outstanding. And it's been outstanding for um, six months. So I take times my interest rate, 10% divided by two times 5%, my interest expense could be 2437093 times 5% or 121,855. So I'm going to credit interest revenue for 121,855 as I've calculated here. Well, my debits and credits don't equal, right? So the next thing I do is, hey, part of this payment paid for interest. So this is like an installment loan. If you think about installment loans, the remainder is reducing my least receivable balance. And so 562,907 minus 121,855, 441, 052. And there you go. Those are the, uh, the first uh, going through the full year. Now, what would the, um, the lessor have on its balance sheet? It would have a lease receivable of um, 2437 minus the 441 would be on their balance sheet. And they would also have on their income statement interest revenue of 121,855. Uh, All right. I might have to start writing smaller here. Let's see. So the lessee, day one, uh, they're going to credit that same lease receivable, same present value of annuity due, nothing changed. So they have a lease obligation of $3 million. And then what's their debit? What, what kind of, they have an asset. What kind of asset? They have a right to use this asset right 
of use asset. Three million. Now, first payment. They are going to pay cash, right? So that's going to be credit cash. Five sixty-two nine zero seven. And what happens? They're going to reduce. their lease obligation. And this all happens on June 30th. Almost the, uh, almost the, mirror, the, the mirror image in the opposite direction of what the lessor has done. In fact, when we get to 1231, the interest calculation is the same because their lease uh, obligation um, is 3 million minus 562. It's, it's sitting at 2437093 at the end of, uh, after the first payment, just like the uh, lessor had a lease receivable of 2437093, now the lessee has an obligation of 2437093. Multiply that times the same math, times 5%, and so they've got a lease expense of 121.855. So this next entry, on 1231, debit interest expense for the calculated amount, that's 5% times the lease payable balance, uh, 121,855. How much cash do they pay, credit cash? They're gonna pay, again, they just have uh, all their payments are 562,907. And so we have a credit, Minus a debit, we're going to reduce uh, the obligation uh, by uh, the difference, 562 minus 121,855, 441,052. Are we done? I wish we were in class. I'm going to hear your answer because uh, a, a lot of you, when you do the exam, you'll say, yes, man, I got this. I'm perfect. I got it done. No, <laughs> you got one more problem because we're sitting there with this right of use asset just sitting out there on our books that at the end of the lease, that right of use asset is going to be valued at zero on our books. So we have to, uh, really like depreciation expense, but we call it amortization expense. And so we're gonna have debit amortization expense, and we're gonna credit our right of use asset. We do not set up an uh, accumulated uh, amortization like with uh, property plant equipment. And so it was 3 million, uh, we're going to use it over three years, so it's going to be amortized at one million per year. How long have we use it? Half of a year, therefore, five hundred thousand. Do not forget uh, to do that entry on the exam. You might just want to make a, a note to yourself. All right. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this next problem. I just want to show it to you, and then I'm just going to really show you the answer. Um, this is exactly the same problem. You can, I'll give you a second to read this. You don't even need to pause the video. I'll give you a little time. Uh, read this problem. It's like all the exact same facts as the previous problem with one um, glowing difference. Okay, what's the big difference here? It's gonna end up with that same uh, $3 million of value in the present value of an ordinary due. Nothing has changed, same 10%, same payments, uh, everything else. However, the, the builder, uh, who's the lessor, uh, they only paid 
2.5 million for the asset. And so this is what we call, it's a sales type lease with a, a selling profit. The other one was one, a sales type lease without a selling profit. And so I'm just gonna show you the entry here. What changes, and by the way, the only thing that changes for the lessor is the first entry. After that, everything's exactly the same as a previous problem. And so I'm gonna set up a lease receivable uh, for the present value of those lease payments, just like they did before. However, uh, this time they're gonna credit revenues, not the equipment, because the equipment only costs 2.5 million. So they're gonna have a profit there. So they're gonna credit the equipment and debit cost of goods sold expense. And um, if you followed this through for the full year, you'd have their income statement would have revenues of 3 million, cost of goods sold 2.5 million, gross margin of 500,000. And then when they did that next entry on 1231, they still have that interest revenue of 121,855, therefore net income 621,855. So certainly, you know, you're gonna have to do, that, do this, uh, know how to do this in, in both uh, directions here. So, okay, thank you for that. And then we're gonna do one last problem here. Uh, again, I'd ask you to um, put this up here. I'd like you to work this problem. We're only gonna do, uh, again, just like the last one, just the first two entries, not the, uh, uh, the, the day one entry, January 1, 2018, and March 31st, 2018. So uh, I'll give you, again, pause the video and, and work this on your own. All right, you guys got this? This should be like pretty straightforward. I mean, again, there's a lot of time value of money here. You're gonna to have to know the time value of money uh, for sure on this. Uh, let me find uh, a blank sheet of paper here somewhere. Should have some, boom, here you go. Nope, I don't wanna use that. Well, I'll just use the back side of this. All right. All right. So first thing uh, is we got to calculate the present value of the annuity due. And um, we had the lease payments were $15,000 uh, payment. Uh, this is a, a five year term. Oh, let me just put payment five year term and the payments per year where they were quarterly. So that's gonna be five times four uh, in equals to 20 number of payments. And then what's the interest rate? Uh, the interest rate uh, was 8%, but again, divided by four payments per year equals to 2%. I mean, this is just a uh, basic uh, time value of money problem. And if we take and we do this on our, our trusty calculator, again, uh, I'm, I'm still in the begin mode from that last problem, so I'm good, but I, you know, I'm getting used to checking that because I don't want to make a mistake either right here on the video. Uh, $15,000 payment, uh, N equals 20. Interest equals 2%, two, 2%. Present value, 250, 177. Now you're welcome to use the time value of money tables, but uh, man, I hate those tables. I would not do it. All right, let's do the lessee first. And lessee was ideal. Um, one, one eighteen. Um, they're going to set up. Uh, uh, we're gonna do the lessee first. I did the lessor first last time. So the lessee is gonna have a right of use asset. For that present value of those payments. And they're gonna have a, a lease obligation or a lease payable. 250, 177. 
And they're also going to make their first payment because this is, again, present value of an annuity due. And so they're going to um, uh, credit cash for the payment amount, 15000 And that payment is going to reduce their, um, their debt, their lease obligation, 15000 Now, March 31st, 18 gets a little bit harder. I've got to go calculate um, their um, interest expense. Interest expense. We're going to debit interest expense. How much is interest expense? It's the 2% because it's uh, only three months, uh, one fourth of the year times the value of their lease obligation. What is their lease obligation? 251.77 minus 15,000. So 2% times, I can do that math, 235.177 interest expense is gonna be $4,703. How much cash are they gonna pay? Oh, same, they're gonna still pay Fifteen thousand dollars in in cash, and so the remainder this difference here. So they made a cash payment of fifteen thousand. Forty seven oh three of that payment went to interest, and the remainder went to reducing the lease obligation. Ten thousand two ninety seven. So think about this in steps. Step one, when you do that next in, that next entry, what's the interest expense? 2% times the, the lease uh, uh, payable. Step two, how much is cash? Well, that's easy. We know that from the problem, you know, the lease payment. And then uh, the lease obligation uh, declines just for the difference between the 15,000 and the 4703. Are we done? No, let's see, they got this right of use asset sitting out there. And so they also are gonna to have to depreciate that uh, debit amortization expense. And uh, credit their uh, right of use asset. Now, how much was this? It's 250.177. Um, it's going to be used over three years, right? Um, no, five years. 250, 177. Used over five years. So it's going to be 50,035 per year. We've been through one fourth of the year, three months, divided by four, 12,509. Again, um, just straight line. How about the lessor? Do they have any amortization expense? No, why? Let's go look at their entry. They're taking that equipment off of their books. They're gonna set up a lease, receive, lease receivable for the same amount, nothing changes here. For 250, 177 and this was sold uh, without any profit and so uh, oh there was uh, there was profit here I'm sorry let's go back and look at that look at that answer go back and look at this oh it was at a cost of two hundred thousand so this is a sales type lease uh, with a selling um, selling profit. So they are going to record revenues for 250, 177. And this equipment is gonna come off of their books, cost of goods sold at the 200,000. And Now the equipment is off of their books, so therefore they have no uh, amortization expense, no depreciation expense. So again, 
read the question very carefully here. Don't just plow through it. Uh, read it methodically and make sure you got to have to differentiate. Is this uh, with a selling profit or or not? If this was not without a selling profit, we would just we would not record revenues of that. All right, next entry. Uh, they are going to receive cash, debit cash. How much? Fifteen thousand. First payment. What happens? Uh, lease receivable is reduced. So we started with a 250 on day one, but they paid it immediately day one. No time has passed, uh, no interest costs. And so uh, they are uh, good to go there. And that finishes 1-1, one, one, 18 They are gonna have interest revenue. It's just gonna be a, a mirror image of this entry right here, uh, except you know backwards cash they're going to receive 15,000 in cash and they're going to have interest revenue of uh, 4703 and that's again because they're using the same discount rate 250 uh, here's the least receivable 250 177 minus the credit for 15,000 so they got a uh, a balance in the least Least receivable of 235, 177 times 2%, 4703. Here's the cash payment. And so the rest comes out of the least receivable. Fifteen thousand minus forty seven oh three, ten thousand two ninety-seven. There you go. That is uh lease accounting problems, the problems that uh, you will have to be able uh uh, to do on the exam and uh, wish you uh, the best of luck on this. Thank you guys.